In this lesson, we're going to discuss VSEPR theory. VSEPR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. It is the pairs of electrons in the outermost energy level or valence shell that are involved in bonding. And because electrons are negatively charged, they repel one another and will want to position themselves as far apart as possible. We use VSEPR theory to predict the arrangement of atoms in a molecule in three-dimensional space. So basically, we're talking about the shapes of the molecules. Why do we need VSEPR theory? Well, if you look at a chemical formula, you're not going to get an idea of what a molecule looks like in three-dimensional space, like the chemical formula H2O that tells us nothing about the shape of the molecule. A Lewis dot structure shows the arrangement of atoms within a molecule, but again, we're not really getting an idea of what these atoms look like, how they're arranged in three-dimensional space. This Lewis dot structure makes it look like the atoms within the water molecule are all within a line, but in reality they are not. VSEPR theory is going to describe molecular geometries and shapes. There are multiple geometries, and for each one, there is one or more possible shapes. To determine geometry and shape, we are going to look at the central atom, how many atoms are attached to it, and how many lone pairs are on the central atom. You received this handout in class. These are the geometries and the shapes. There is a column right here for geometry, linear, trigonal, planar, tetrahedral, trigonal, bipyramidal, and octahedral. And then over here we have shapes. And you can see one or more possible shapes for each geometry. What is different about them are the number of attachments and lone pairs. These little bubbles right here with the dots represent lone pairs of electrons. And to determine which row to look at, we're going to look right here, total number of attachments and lone pairs around the central atom. Let's try a couple of examples. Uh, aluminum bromide. Remember, aluminum is an exception to the octet rule and needs only six valence electrons instead of eight. So the Lewis-Stat structure is given here. And we want to look at how many atoms are attached to the central atom. Well, this bromine is attached, so is this one, and so is this one. So there are three attachments to the central atom. There are no lone pairs on the central atom. And if I add that together, 3 plus 0 equals 3. When I look at my sheet of geometries and shapes, I'm going to look at the number 3. That means that my geometry is trigonal planar. And then for my shape, I have two choices. Uh, one that has all attachments around the central atom, and then one that has one lone pair. Well, that's not my molecule. So I'm going to go with trigonal planar for my shape as well. The last thing I'm going to look at is the bond angle. And that's exactly what it sounds like, the angle between the bonds. And you can see it labeled here as 120 degrees. So that's what I will fill in. Geometry, trigonal planar, shape, trigonal planar, and bond angle 120 degrees. Here is a three-dimensional rendering of that molecule. Next we have HCN. Here is the Lewis dot structure. And I'm going to look at my central atom, carbon. There are two atoms attached to it and no lone pairs on the carbon. So 2 plus 0 is 2. So I'm going to look at the number 2 on my VSEPR sheet. That geometry is called linear and there is only one possible shape also called linear. The angle between the bonds is 180 degrees. So linear geometry, linear shape, 180 degree bond angle. Here is a 3D rendering of that molecule. Next we have phosphorus trichloride. 
there are three chlorines attached to the central atom. And then there's also one lone pair on the central atom. We count pairs, so there's just one lone pair. Three plus one equals four, and if you refer to your reference sheet, that geometry name is tetrahedral. There are three possible shapes. The one with only one lone pair is called pyramidal. And the bond angle for pyramidal is 107 degrees. The electrons within that lone pair repel and squeeze the atoms a little bit closer together than in the regular tetrahedral shape. Here is a 3D rendering of the pyramidal shape. And finally, xenon difluoride. There are two fluorines attached to the central atom, and there are three lone pairs on the central atom. One, two, three. So 2 plus 3 is 5, and then the geometry name is trigonal bipyramidal. And we have a few shapes to choose from. It's going to be the last one, linear. So there's a linear shape for a linear geometry and a linear shape for a trigonal bipyramidal geometry. The difference is the number of lone pairs. Bond angle here would be 180 degrees, just like um, the linear shape for the linear geometry. And here is a 3D rendering of the trigonal bipyramidal linear shape. So now you should be able to determine the geometry and the shape for a molecule by looking at the Lewis dot structure and the number of attachments and lone pairs on the central atom.